So this was years ago. I was driving home one day in my brand new used convertible. It's a 2003 Mazda Miata that I just bought on Facebook for about $3,000. And I don't know if you can imagine, you can't see because it's a virtual talk, but I'm uh, about six foot two. And so me driving a little Miata, if you've ever seen one of those, it's kind of like a go-kart. I'm like, my head is literally poking out above the windshield. It's like a clown car. But anyway, I'm driving home, having an amazing time, like jamming out. I whip into the side street by my house and I was perhaps going a little bit too fast. It's not important. <laughs> so I would drive in there. And just as I'm pulling in, this guy is kind of stepping out, like walking his dog, about to step into the road. And so he kind of jumps back. I slam on the brakes. And then we sort of lock eyes in that mutually pissed off, sort of frustrated look. You know what I'm talking about, maybe, if you've ever been uh, on the road. So we sort of lock eyes and you know, we start mouthing something there. He mouths something I can't really hear him. You know, I mouth something. And all of a sudden, you know, I throw open the door and I walk out after him. And just as he turns around, I kind of have a moment where I just, and I say to him, you know what? That was my bad. And he kind of looks at me. What? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I came in here a little too fast. I was just uh, listening to music, having a good time. I didn't really see you. And honestly, I, it could have hit you. Yeah, it was my mistake. I'm sorry. He's like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And we talk for a second and it's fine. So we're cool. You know, I get in my car and right as my butt hits the seat, I'm like, what was that? <laughs> what the hell just happened? And I realized something. I realized that that was my habits wearing away at me. That my daily practice of meditation, just 10 minutes, 20 minutes every single day, but in those 20 minutes, trying to intentionally pay attention to the present moment. That when my attention or my awareness was drifting off, I would bring it back to the present moment. As my favorite football coach, retired football coach, now Nick Saban used to say, said mindfulness, it's just about be where your feet are. And so by training that capacity, once I was in real life, I didn't realize how much I had changed psychologically, but then life happened and I realized that I'd been totally transformed. And so that is why I often teach this idea of learned happiness, the learned happiness model. And important part of that is if actually paradoxically, if you look at the research, people who just focus and strive, like I want to be happier, I want to be happier, I want to be happier, actually tend to have lower levels of happiness and well-being because they get a lot of anxiety or frustration. It's really about learning the key skill sets that lead to being happier and being more effective. And one of those is mindfulness or self-awareness. They're really the, uh, kind of the same thing. So this idea of training self-awareness is something that I always teach. I believe it's foundational to leaders or anyone in the professional or work domain of their life is because think about just the same example, but you're at work, right? You're having, you're really stressed. You're going through your email, you're behind and you're just worn out and your manager comes to you with something new and you're kind of frustrated, but you have to recognize your own internal state. You have a few weeks ago, I gave a talk to a national property management company <clears throat> and they were talking about how their property managers have to deal with things like it's been raining for five days straight and one of the tenant calls and he's yelling and screaming, why haven't you cut my grass? And it's like, well, sir, uh, there is three inches of water outside of your window, <laughs> but they don't say that, right? They have to recognize their own internal state so they can kind of calm for a second, relax, and then approach that conversation from a more resourceful state. So I really believe self-awareness is a key pillar of, like I said, both being happy at work and being effective at work. And this is a skill that can be trained. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this short video. If you want a kind of training protocol for this, the simplest one is essentially meditation. And that's something you can find more videos on on my channel, uh, some resources down below as well. So I hope you enjoyed this short little introduction into this idea that with intentional training, let's say in this specific case, 20 minutes per day of mindfulness or meditation or a similar practice that cultivates self-awareness, you can change your psychology so that when you're actually out in your daily life, your day-to-day -day life, you will interact or show up in a different way, in a way that's going to help you to be more resourceful and ultimately more effective and of course, uh, happier because 
as far as I know, getting into fist fights in the middle of the road, particularly with people who have large German shepherds with them, uh, would be a recipe for unhappiness. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Here's another video that YouTube suggests you like. And as always on this channel, uh, you can find practical insights, both stories and also from the research literature uh, that will help you to be happier in both work and in life. So I'll see you next time.